Peter Charles and welcome to my video a tutorial on the Skagit double spay. The traditional double spay originated in Scotland and has been used for probably more than a century as a cast that can be made when dealing with a downstream wind. There are a number of styles of double spay cast and they all work. There is no one right way. But the basics of the cast remain the same. A lift of the line upstream, a set of the line onto the water, a sweep into the back cast, cast the D-loop, the forward cast. Skagit spay casting started in the 1980s out in the Pacific Northwest as a way of casting heavy sink tips and large flies. It has since developed into a broader range of styles suitable for more than just steelhead fishing in western rivers. To cast these big flies and heavy tips, Skagit casting anglers developed short, heavy shooting heads. They then had to produce a style of casting that uses a sustained anchor to cast these heads. The double spay has been developed into the Skagit double spay for use with the sustained anchor casting. There are subtle differences between it and the traditional version in the lift and the sweep, but the main difference is in the transition from back cast to forward cast. In the traditional cast there is a pause to allow the D-loop to form. In the Skagit version the sweep into the back cast is out away from the body and without a pause. The only pause in the Skagit version occurs when the line is set on the water after the lift. This pause allows the water to grip the line, producing a load on the rod as we sweep into the back cast. Notice how the arms leave the body in an outward motion as the back cast is being made. Notice also that there is no pause during the forward cast as the Skagit double uses continuous motion to load the rod. Right from the beginning of the sweep into the forward cast, the rod is never paused and the load on the rod is maintained. These two elements are critical differences between the traditional double spay and the Skagit version. In an efficient double spay, the arms are kept close to the body during the lift and in the start of the sweep. When making the lift, the arms are simply crossed to bring the rod over to the upstream side and the line along with it. The anchor is left downstream and downwind of the angler for both casting efficiency and safety. If the anchor is brought too much upstream, the fly can hit the angler on the forward cast. The sweep into the back cast starts slow and continues with a constant tension on the rod. This rod loading is maintained all the way through to the end of the forward stroke. As the rod tip passes toward the downstream side of the angler, the arms extend to sweep the line out and around. This extension of the arms is crucial to straightening out the anchor and producing an efficient D-loop. The forward cast starts with this extension of the arms and continues over the top. Do not rush the sweep or we will end up with a blown anchor as we see here. The fly leaves the water with a loud whoop and the cast falls lamely in front of the angler. If we do not extend the arms enough, we will not be able to straighten out and then lift the anchor. When making the forward cast, we will then hear a lot of slurping noises as the line is dragged off the water. The cast will not have a lot of energy and we are likely to see the tip of the line land with a hook or a bend in it. A well executed double spay will roll out with a smooth loop and will land straight on the water at the desired distance. The cast is made slowly and deliberately without excessive force. Use the weight of the line and the maintained load on the rod to send it on its way. Learn to cast the Skagit double spay off of either shoulder and you will be able to make this cast from either bank when a downstream wind is blowing. The Skagit double spay is a useful and powerful cast that should be in the arsenal of any Skagit style angler. I hope you find this video to be useful in your spay casting journey. 